Hi everyone, uh, my name is Keith Duckworth. I've been using Emacs for about a year and a half. Uh, if you do the math, you'll see that was pretty soon after the pandemic hit us in the US. Um, so while I was busy, you know, making bread, walking my dogs, trying not to drive myself crazy uh, at the house, I tried Emacs again. Um, I don't know if I was successful in not uh, going crazy. Uh, I mean, I still use Emacs. Uh, but uh, I have been able to enjoy the infinitely malleable, immensely enjoyable, and sublimely parenthetical world of Emacs the editor, the community, and of course the Lisp language. So, uh, and in this I'm going to uh, kind of explore just a little anecdote of that, a uh, little nugget of what I think makes Emacs so great uh, using uh, the lens of a package that I wrote. Um, about a month ago now, called uh, frowny.el. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, oops. Okay, so before the beginning, I want to talk about my very beginnings with Linux. Uh, I first installed Linux for the first time as a freshman in college, uh, way back in 2008. And I don't know if you were around, but 2008 was not the year of the Linux desktop. Um, <laughs> Uh, Wi-Fi was weird, sound was weird, uh, everything was odd and strange and weird. I mean, it wasn't good. So, and at that time I knew absolutely nothing about anything. Um, so I installed this uh, terrible uh, distro called GOS. I actually always forget what it's called and then I looked it up and this is what I looked at um, when I signed in and it wasn't good. I think it was trying to like uh, integrate better with Google tools. Uh, so I was like, oh yeah, you know, I have Gmail and Google Calendar, so this will have it all there. And anyway, the company's defunct now and there's no, it's pretty obvious why it was really bad. So I thought to myself, um, I'll delete the partition, easy peasy. So I did and I rebooted and the master boot record was gone. So I couldn't boot Windows and it was all, ah. And I was like, oh shit, um, I have to, you know, do my schoolwork. So I thought I was totally hosed, um, so I just installed Linux. Um, I think I installed Crunchbang Linux first. Um, it looked like this. Uh, this is it's not super exciting. It was an open box based, Debian based uh, uh, distro run by this one guy out in England. Uh, it was great. I uh, really enjoyed it. The forums were amazing. Um, it still kind of lives on through a project called Bunsen Labs, so go check them out if you want. Um, it was a good time. Anyway, I was using that for a long time, and you know, probably familiar to many of you, uh, I hopped around from distro to distro, from WM to DE to another WM to another DE, you know, just on and on and on, trying different things. Um, I'm not a programmer, I actually went to school for English uh, writing. Um, and so I learned programming mostly from configuring different window managers. Like I learned Lua with Awesome, with WM, I learned Haskell with the Xmonad, or sort of Haskell. I mean, I liked Haskell. Uh, I like Haskell a lot, um, at least the syntax. Um, I like, you know, it looks like words. Um, you can define a function multiple times uh, for like different inputs. It has that really great pattern matching. Uh, the thing I didn't get was Monad. Uh, what is a monad? Is it a burrito? Is it a box? Is it a burrito inside of a box? Is it a box inside of a burrito? Is there a cat involved or a superposition of such? I don't know. Anyway, it, it got confusing. Um, that's really where I lost me. Um, again, you know, if you like Haskell, if you write Haskell, more power to you. I could just, it didn't fit my brain right. And, um, so, you know, that was that, but it kind of ruined me for a lot of other programming languages because the functional style I really get. That part I did get. And stuff like Python, that really object orientation, I would always get way too into um, classes and figuring out this and that. I, it just didn't work for me. So I was kind of floating. Uh, I learned Bash, which is, you know, Bash. It's fine, but it's bash, so it wasn't great either. So anyway, that was six years or so, just kind of did that, right? Um, and yes, I was using Vim. I mean, you know, keeps you clean, right? But no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, um, 
I was using Vim, the editor. It was fine. Uh, it was great. I mean, I mean, like yeah, Enix and Vim, they go head to head because they're both forty years old. They both are super powerful. They both have their own paradigms that if you get into it, then it's like you know, and you're doing all this stuff. It's great. So yeah, I wrote some plugins with Vim, uh, a couple of themes, uh, this and that. Um, but you know, I mean, VimScript is not great. It, it's. I mean, I think one of the common uh, criticisms of Elisp is it's. Uh, it's like, oh, it's this weird kind of. It's. It's written for a text editor, and hell yeah, it's. It's way less than VimScript is. Oof. Um, anyway. So so that, also you know, it was really terminal first, um, which I used for a long time, and then. I only think I started noticing now that I'm using Emacs more, like that terminal first workflow, for again, for my brain, it doesn't super work for me. Um, I always had this like kind of platonic ideal of like what a workflow should look like and I was always working towards it sort of. And then I would run into this problem and I wouldn't know how to solve it. So I kind of quit and do something else. And I think that was part of why I had so much churn for such a long time. Because at, at the end of the day, I mean, uh, window managing you're just moving around little boxes on your screen you know um just so i was spinning wheels for a long time um but yeah so so and it wasn't like it was all bad you know most of this stuff just came out now that i'm thinking about it you know now that i'm kind of going through this in my head like that part of it wasn't great like i was having a good time you know it's still open source, I was getting into the community, I was doing all this stuff, right? It was all great. So, but anyway, the pandemic hit, obviously, really hard last spring in the US. So, uh, yeah, I mean, and here we are talking about the pandemic in 2021. Can you imagine? So I didn't lose my job, thank goodness, thank goodness but I did, because I worked for the government, uh, but I was sent home for two months. I had all this free time on my hands. Uh, I got into baking, uh, bought 50 pound bag of flour, I started a bread themed tilde server, you know, those shared Unix servers that all the cool kids talk about. It's uh, breadpunk.com, uh, breadpunk.club, sorry. Uh, go check it out. Yeah, yeah, you know, join if you want. Anyway, yeah. So I decided to try Emacs again, um, kind of on a whim, I think. I don't super remember, but I think I did. Um, I tried it before. Uh, you know, I tried Space Max. It just it didn't stick because Space Max was like trying to be Vim, but like, enough things didn't fit in with what I was expecting with my Vim workflow because um, I also had some plugins that you know did certain things that then I didn't know how to just get into Space Max so um, it just didn't work for me um, but so then yeah I mean I tried Emacs and this time it stuck uh, I started out just vanilla you know basic no init.el then I wrote an init.el and I rewrote my init.el and then I took my init.dl, crumbled it up, threw it in the trash can, wrote it again from scratch. Um, I'm actually currently in the middle of bankruptcy number eight. I think I really got it this time. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll see you around at number nine, but anyway. Um, so yeah, I have like 1,700-ish commits. Um, I also have like three or four Emacs repositories around my various Git hosting platforms that I use. You know, I was on GitHub, GitLab, tilde Git. I don't use it very well. Um, I'm very much an amateur in that entire thing. So anyway, that is all to say I got into it, right? Um, like really into it. Like uh, I, I was watching Emacs conference videos, like live. <laughs> um, I was reading R Emacs. I was reading Planet Emacs. Uh, I subscribed to both. Um, I have other blogs that I read. Um, you know, all the greats, everybody who's presenting here probably, you know, uh, I started watching people on YouTube, like Prot, uh, like David Wilson, um, who does Six of Crafters, hi. And uh, I was already on IRC with the Tildeverse, and so I hopped over to Emacs on uh, Freenode. You remember, remember Freenode? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a good time. Um, you know, so I was doing all this stuff. And, oh yeah, right. Anyway, so that's all to say, uh, frowns. Um, I was on System Crafters uh, channel on Libera.chat. Uh, it's the channel for the YouTube channel System Crafters by David Wilson. Um, I think he's on later. Um, I'm sure he'll talk about it or I don't know what he's talking about. But um, 
Anyway, one day we were chatting, and this guy, Alpha Papa, who you know also has written a lot of these packages, um, uh, said, uh, electric pair mode messes up my frowny faces sometimes. You can see here, um, uh, this, this frowny, what is this? What is, oh my god, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> well, you can see it there on the screen. What, what is that, right? Um, it's, it's terrifying. What is this? Um, what is that? I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Um, and then I said, you know, I have a hook that disables electric pair mode uh, for chat poppers, which actually, uh, fun fact, I was lying. Um, it, not that that matters, but uh, yeah, so I have a hook. You know, you could have a hook that just disables electric pair mode and chat buffers, to which he replied, um, yeah, but I want electric pair mode everywhere except for when I type a frowny face. And then this other, this sandwich face, or what is that? So, you know, he said, I could stop typing frowny faces. Um, and then I said, hmm, I feel, and then I said, I feel like your best position to write a package, uh, like frowny.el, I said, as a joke. Um, and then, you know, conversation went on, you know, we talked about, made some jokes about Lisp and all that stuff, and, you know. Uh, so, anyway, it went on, went on. Uh, and then, apparently, 23 minutes later, I had a frowny.el package just wrote up real quick. And, uh, yeah, uh, that was it. Uh, I said, you know, buddy. But anyway, so yeah, so now we're going to look at the package that I wrote, uh, frowny.el. Um, it was actually pretty easy. Uh, let's see here. This is, this is it now. Um, I kind of want to go back into, let's go back to the very beginning. Let's see what we have. Here's our very first, my very first commit is, yeah, so I already had, you know, the, all of this crap. Um, uh, oh, I already did have a, I had a deaf group, so yeah, I had frowny eyes, because I thought, okay, so this is basically the way I thought of it was, so you want to insert a frowny face, right? You, you type in the colon, uh, or the equal sign, or whatever, for the eyes, and then you type the open parenthesis for the frown. Uh, and the problem is that open parenthesis then triggers electric pair mode. It's like, oh no, I got a close parenthesis. So I was like, so we can just short circuit that whenever there's a thing, a uh, colon or equal sign before and just insert the thing, then we're good to go. So that's kind of what I did. So I wrote out, yeah, this is it. This is the whole package. It's one function, one minor mode, one def custom and one group. That's it. Super simple. Um, basically, all it does is, you know, it inserts a frowny if uh, if it's if it looks back and sees uh, frowny eyes, which are up here. Um, <laughs> the eyes are up here. Uh, you know, colon equal sign, um, and then it inserts it, or it does a self insert command. That simple. Which a self insert command is what electric uh, insert insert electric pair mode hooks into. That's it. And then the minor mode just, you know, makes it a minor mode. So that was that. Um, and, you know, that worked just fine. So that was, and that's that's the thing, it works just fine. Um, of course, after that, I had to do a different, couple of different things. I had to add a mascot. Um, I had to add a readme. Um, I added a global frowny mode, um, which was kind of interesting because I had to figure out, you know, this turn on the frowny mode. I had to, um, you know, wrote this define globalized minor mode, which is that the one? No, that one's not super new. There was another one, something else that like was actually for 28, I think, or 27, and I tried using it at work where I have where I have Windows, and it was 27, so it must have been for 28. Anyway, something didn't work. I had to like do all this stuff, but um, oops, sorry. And then, you know, I added some customization options, uh, made package lint happy. So yeah, let's see. Um, oh, so that's, that's point one, right? This version point one uh, was basically basic um, information. So then somebody, I put it on GitHub, good to go. It actually got some traction um, on Reddit. Uh, Alpha Baba, shout out to you, uh, posted there and anyway. Uh, but then I got a issue. Uh, somebody said, hey, could you add a smiley support? And I was like, well, I don't really understand why that's important. And they said, well, you know, why not? I mean, you, it, 
there are they had a use case for it I forget but they had a use case for it it's like okay fine so I added some island controllers right here um, so that uh, basically oh and I added some more eyes uh, at some point so you know oh yeah now you have uh, you can do a tear you can do a nose you know um, let's see yeah so I had to change frowny self insert to frowny insert character um, uh, I added to frowny self insert frowny right here uh, I added uh, I had a del obsolete function alias that was super fun that was a cool thing to do um, I have insert smiley as well I mean it's they're both very similar uh, it's they're all still there I added a key to key map um, that was pretty much it you know and again super simple very small um, let me try this again uh, added comment to doc strings at some point I decided let me try to make a frowny prog mode that only works in you know programming modes and it'll only work in strings and in comments but it's still there's still a branch for it if you want to go check it out but um, it wasn't super useful and I think actually electric pair mode already does that I'm not 100% sure I got a pull request from Alpha Papa adding history.org that's where you can go read the IRC logs about it um, there's let's see and then just recently I actually had to add frowny inhibit mode because um, with dear ed I, w I kept getting this you know I would I would try to hit uh, pr open parenthesis, which is my um, uh, dear ed high details mode and uh, but it it kept saying hey it's a read-only buffer I'm like what I was like oh yeah right it's Emacs I did control HK um, and then open versus he was like oh frowny self insert it's like oh duh so I had to add this little you know frowny inhibit modes a uh, bit so now there's a little custom in here right now it's just defaults to special mode I added dear red mode uh, myself uh, on my config I might add that as a default as well I, I'm gonna think about it um, and then yeah and then so now we're at vo version point three um, that's where we're at now uh, I just updated the readme was the last one uh, but yeah basically the last functionality was this frowny inhibit mode um, and yeah now it is just this is it this is the whole thing right here um, it's pretty short I think it's a total of 113 lines um, but you know what it's it's got it's useful for people um, and it's something where I never thought I would write software that people would use like I said I'm not a programmer um, I'm just this guy I like using Emacs because I'm kind of a nerd and I like tinkering around and doing things the hard way um, I don't yeah I could use Microsoft Word. I should you know I was trying to write this um, presentation up and my wife said why don't you just write it in Google Docs and I was like I I don't want to <laughs> I mean that's really it right isn't that why we're all here <laughs> um, so yeah you know so anyway that's the story about frowny uh, that's the story about me um, my journey to Emacs, my journey to this conference, um, yeah, and the journey of this package. Uh, I think it's about done. Um, I'm not sure what else needs to go in there. If you have any suggestions, pull requests, comments, there's a GitHub. Uh, there's a GitHub right here, frowny.el. Um, let's see. I gotta pull it up. Uh, you know, frowny.el. Um, I'll put it on a convenience again that's something I still don't understand with packages is the whole keywords thing I'm still confused on that um, but yeah just requires Emacs 24 um, yeah that's it uh, so anyway uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be live for questions I'm recording this you know obviously a bit before and I will be uh, traveling that weekend this weekend uh, when you're watching this um, so I'm gonna uh, but right now when I'm recording it I'm not 100% sure I will know obviously by then so maybe I'll talk to you in a moment maybe not um, otherwise yeah have a great conference everybody and um, I'm really excited to see every everyone's talks so